Today we're going to show you a car owned by one of the most infamous people the world has ever seen. Today we're going to show you Saddam Hussein's limousine. So we're back at the Peterson Museum again with Leslie Kendall, chief historian, mega brain when it comes to anything automotive. You're very and, kind, thank you. <laughs> and, and today you're going to show us Saddam Hussein's limo, right? Well, we're going to show you Saddam Hussein's limousine Landolet. Now, Landolet. A, a Landolet is a very specific body style. Sometimes people have convertibles, they have convertible sedans, which have four doors and the top that goes down. A Landolet describes the kind of body that is enclosed in the front but open in the rear. Because when you're a head of state, what's important is in the back seat. The people that, that you most want to see are in the back. You don't care about the chauffeur. The chauffeur can stay cosseted insi right. inside his little, um, or her, little, little metallic shell. But the, 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 the show is really for in the back seat. So the top goes down, but just over the rear. Interesting thing about this, this Mercedes, it is one of only a tiny number of its particular type. Mercedes made uh, over 4,600s, a combination of Pullman, limousines and landolets, and short wheelbase, which are far more common. Of those, uh, we believe 428 were the Pullman limousines. Of those, we believe that 51 were landolets. Of those, we believe that nine were the state landolet, which meant that the convertible portion of the roof didn't stop. I told you he was knowledgeable, right? <laughs> the convertible portion of the roof didn't stop here, like on your regular Landolet. It went all the way here. Because when you look inside, you can, this is where the VIP would have stood. Saddam Hussein I didn't even know the roof came off it. himself wow. would, have, would have stood here, held on to these assist straps or grab handles so that if he, they made a sudden stop, he wouldn't fall down, or if they suddenly accelerated, he wouldn't fall back. Let me ask you a question. How did you get this car? This, it, it's a chain of fortunate circumstances. Um, the Peterson Museum tries to make itself aware of what other automobiles are doing, and, and we like to help. We assisted with the, the um, creation uh, of the Royal Jordanian Automotive Museum. And we were there to visit it after it opened. And through a chain of fortunate circumstances, we happened to meet the Mercedes-Benz distributor for that region of the world. And he said, you know what? I think there's something that you slash Mr. Peterson might be interested in. Uh, come on in the back and I'll show you what it is. And a, a row of cars, you know, fairly plebeian to the degree that that's possible, Mercedes. And at the very end, uh, was this car and of course you know the eye is immediately drawn to the 600 because even today this is a very imposing car it's huge there's, there's really nothing like it it, it just has a it, it has a marvelous stance and it performs as good as it looks I and mean, this car corners beautifully really? and, and even in, in this condition it'll do zero to 60 now it doesn't seem fast today but it's three tons and it'll do zero to 60 in 12 seconds which That's is, impressive. Which is really, really what, what, fast. What year is this? This one is we early 70s. It's, 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 it's kind of difficult to uh, assign a, a year because it takes a, a bit of time to build. We believe 71, 72, something like that. Interesting. And, and I guess these are where the gods stood, right? Well, if you were an infamous leader and with a lot of people mad at you, you, wanted to, you really needed to protect yourself. So uh, Saddam Hussein, we don't know if it was the Republican Guard or, or not, but we do know that the, the guards would stand on these, these steps that were removable. You could actually pull these out, how, how did they store hang, them in the trunk. On. What's that? How did they hold on? Because at the back, I see there's handles. What ha well, the top would have been down, so they could have held on to this. I see. See, the top, the top would have come down from here. It would have stacked you, put a nice boot over it. To, to tidy up the appearance. They would have stood. Can on, I stand on it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh-oh. Not many people can say they stood on Saddam Hussein's landolet. Well, now you won't be able to say that. Wow. There you go. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable with you protecting me. No. Every <laughs> world leader 
um, had different needs. And this is one of Saddam Hussein's needs. He specified that his car would have these. Same on the other side? Same on the other side. He's got those on the other side. He also specified grab handles for the, the, his guards when they needed to take off. Uh, for example, you've seen presidential vehicles um, the, on the sad day of, of Kennedy's um, shooting. You saw, the, you saw the Secret Service climb up onto his car and grab onto it as the car sped away. Right. Uh, that's the kind of thing you have to allow for. Um, whether people like you or not, uh, whether you're evil or not, um, you, you know, you're going to want to get away of if, if something happens. So and the same thing with this? It's the same thing with that. And you know, th this, this is a good time to bring up a point that a car cannot help its history. If it, it, it appears in a certain time and place, it becomes part of history. It's not that the car says that that history was correct or that, or that, that association was, was for the best. Right. A car, again, it's like Hitler's Mercedes. He had Mercedes. Uh, you know, a lot of other world leaders had cars that were um, equally as grand and, and equally as, as glorious. It's not the car's fault. It's not the car's fault. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's the car happened to be where it was. Right. So, so get, getting back to this, the guard would stand up here. And if you look at the trunk, you'll notice that the, at just the right angle, you see there's a lot of little dents in it. And yeah, like door dings, right, but on the top and of the we, trunk. Well, what we believe is that the guards would, of course, be armed when they were watching him. When a parade or the event or ceremony was over, the car would go back to the state garage. And the guards would jump on, on the back. They would step on the step, uh, step plate, uh, jump on, and the rifle butts would hit the trunk. And that's why it got so many dents. Uh, I don't suppose they were, I, I don't know why they would never repair them. I, I just don't know why, but maybe um, Saddam just didn't notice. Uh, or, didn't or, care. or didn't care, or if the camera's far away, uh, far enough away, you, you really can't see it uh, because um, there are a lot. Th there are quite a few, and and you can see. Let's look in the trunk. Um, it's opening a 600 trunk. You pull this, comes up, and looking inside, this is a spare tire. This is where the spare tire would have been. This is some kind of a. A mat that was in the car? We will, yeah, it was a mat that was in the car. We believe it might have been a, a prayer rug, but we, what we also found when we purchased this car was water with Arabic writing on it. And so do you know how long this car had been out of Saddam Hussein's possession before it ended up with that Mercedes well, dealer that when, you were talking? When he, when he fled, um, what we know is that an Iraqi businessman acquired the car, drove the car out, of uh, Iraq uh, into Jordan and did a, a deal with the Mercedes uh, Benz um, agency and uh, acquired, they acquired legitimate title to the car. And that's another thing to mention. It's we have a legitimate title to this car. So we wanted to make very special sure that this car had, a, had a, a, exactly the right paperwork because cars are one of very few titled assets right. in America. It says on the door here, you can see it was a crest of some kind, right? Now, we believe it, if I was an Iraqi businessman driving this car out of Iraq, after you wouldn't the, want that there, especially right? tumultuous time in its history, right, right. I probably would want this taken off too. I don't know if he took it off. I don't know if somebody else took it off. This car is imperfect. And we let, we're leaving it that way because it shows signs of it having been used during a very tumultuous time in the history of the Middle East. This is not a car that is meant to, to show what a Mercedes 600 Land Delay is, although it does that right. beautifully. This car is meant to represent an era in history. So we're leaving the dents in it. Uh, we're leaving the inside um, a little bit um, as we found These it. These are cigarette burns there's everywhere, cig There's right? cigarette burns, there's some stains. We could get this, this car could be perfect a year from now if we wanted but it you, to be. But you, why would you? It's authentic. But, but right. that's not the point behind this car. The point behind this car is its infamous first owner. Right. And how cars sometimes fall into the, to the hands of people who really really don't deserve them. Interesting. I just noticed the grab handles up there that you were talking about. Yeah, you about, can yeah. see the grab handles. One of them happens to be missing. Uh, we don't know why, uh, but there, the, other, the other two stand there. And you'll see that there was plenty of floor space and it was a flat floor. They could stand up and, and wave to the minions. 
as they were as they were as they were driving by. Is there any footage or photographs of Saddam Hussein in this car? Uh, there are photographs that we um, that the rights to use are very limited. Mm -hmm. So uh, unfortunately, I I really can't share them. Uh, but there the, are they in do this exist. Context, but there's there's evidence that he was maybe he we rode can in this find car. something on the uh, on the web that we can insert, right? I mean, probably not if they're, you know, if they're privately owned, well, we probably won't if, get the rights. You know, but. somebody may have taken a picture that's, that belongs to them, that they have the rights to use. Yeah. And I would love to hear that. Right. If somebody has a photo of Saddam Hussein in this car, um, it's, it's something that I, I would be very interested to add to our file. Absolutely. It is kind of interesting to think that, you know, we're stood next to this here in the basement, in the vault. And Saddam Hussein was once inside of this car. His it's, hands probably adjusted eerie, the volume. Actually. It's quite yeah, isn't that, eerie. isn't that it's interesting? A little, it, it's a little eerie. Um, but what's interesting, we're, it, in a way, we make up for this car because we also have the uh, Pope's Cadillac. <laughs> right. So the, the, the bad guy which in the we'll, butt. Which, which we'll show you another day, which right? Which we'll show that you another day. I'm, I'm right happy over to show, there. show you another day. That is, that is quite funny that you have the Pope's car right there and Saddam Hussein's car. I have another here. question for you. So, the exhaust, they've never seen anything quite like this. It protrudes a good, what, eight, nine inches behind the bumper, which is right next to where the, the guard would stand. Why? Well, we, we're guessing on this. We don't know for sure, but we think it's to take the, if the exhaust came out of here, it would be that much closer to the people that we're sitting here. And when you got, when you got the turbulence coming, uh, the air turbulence coming off from the back of the car, it, it might have pushed the exhaust back. So they took it just that much farther out. Plus, um, Saddam may have just wanted a little bling on his car. We, <laughs> we don't know. It could have been that simple. But, but there, are, there are a couple of possible reasons. Maybe they were both true. As Ooh. we fill the gas tank, Secret. the gas tank uh, was 25 gallons. So today, uh, if you wanted to fill your, your, your gas tank, it would cost you about 250 American dollars to, to fill this 25 gallon gas tank. But you needed 25 gallons. Right. Again, this is a 6,000 pound car with a 6.3 liter V8 overhead cam engine. And I noticed something else as well. On the front, this I'm assuming is where the flags went? That's exactly right. Uh, it's where the flag standards went. Uh, we don't have the flags. Um, we're, we, if, if somebody has a photograph of the car, again, uh, it, it would certainly help us determine what should be in there. Uh, and the ornament uh, was the, the radiator mascot, as you would call it, or in this case, the hood ornament, uh, was taken off before we got it, and we don't know what happened to it. But until we're sure, we're not going to mess with the car. I think we're, that's brilliant. That you we're going to leave that. it like it is because it has its own story to tell. We don't know how this dent got here, but it's a story. It's, again, this car did not live an easy life. My it's bet a, is that there is an American GI somewhere wearing that as a necklace. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, that's, I'm that's sure that's possible. That's a very good idea. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's possible. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. And the front, the front inside the cockpit is just a regular, well, I say regular, the standard configuration, right? It's, it's a very nice place to be. It's a very nice office to have. Uh, and you certainly have all of the um, uh, power controls at your disposal. It bears mentioning that all of the power equipment in this car is hydraulic. It's not electric. So the windows are hydraulic. Really? Uh, the, the, the suspension is uh, pneumatic, which means it's air suspension. So that's why it leans a little bit one way or another, and most Mercedes 600s do, until you start them up and the uh, airbags in the front and rear can adjust and, and equalize. Uh, but if you got, I would not want to get my hand caught if I was putting up one of these windows. Yeah, it's not like uh, electric. It's you about twelve hundred pounds per square inch of, of, Ooh, of the force. Shops the so you, you, you're, you're have a problem if that happens. When to I you. opened the, this door earlier, I noticed. May I? Yes, please. I noticed some interesting buttons here. What would they be? We're not sure what those buttons are, uh, but we know that in the early days there were ways that the passengers, the VIP. Um, guest in the car would be able to signal signal the driver faster, slower, go home, go to the club, uh, you know, stop and get my dry cleaning, do 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 whatever you need to do. Fast. Those are the kind of things. And instead of barking your order, putting the, the division window down and and barking your order through uh, through that uh, area, you just hit a button. We believe that's what that's uh, 
it's that's a, what those were for. It's amazing how many burn holes there are from cigarettes. So. Do you know what I think those buttons are for, mate? I think one of them's for the rockets, and the other one's for the spikes that drop out the back. Smoke screen too. That's, that's what I think they're for. Well, we have a car with a smoke screen. You do? Yeah. Isn't it one of these? No, it's it's a plain Jane Mercedes that was. Oh, like an actual, not like a Batmobile smoke screen, like a no. real. Yeah. No way. I, I, interesting. The Mercedes was, in addition to Rolls Royce, was the only manufacturer after World War II to offer regular production land delay. Again, land delay is a body style where the top goes down, but only in the back. They call them state land delays because by the, by the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, you could expect to go down on the freeway and it would not have been fun sitting back here with the top down going 70 or 80 miles an hour. Eating bugs. Probably, probably, but it's exactly what you needed when you were, when you were in a parade. Leslie, thank you. You're welcome. Guys, another amazing story behind this crazy car. Hope you liked it. Hit the like button, whether you did or you didn't. I know you did. Hit the subscribe button. We're in it to win it, and we're gonna show you more very soon. Mm -hmm.